All right, everyone, it's time to work together on a final project. So let's build a little context manager. And the requirements will be, of course, we need to build it using Backbone so that, of course, it will automatically update when we add a new contact. We should be able to edit them, delete them. We should be able to persist them using the Laravel framework. We have a lot to do in the next few lessons, so let's jump in. The only thing that I'm starting with is a fresh installation of the Laravel framework. So if I view it in the browser, you can see, yep, we have the hello world area. We haven't made any other modifications other than creating a database and creating a unique key and all of the basic stuff that you do when installing Laravel. So now we need to set up a migration to create a contacts table. And we'll do that from the command line. PHP artisan migrate install. We need to make sure that we have the migration tables installed. And then we'll create a new one, create contacts table. The name of the table will be contacts and we're going to be creating a new table. Good. So now if I go into database, migrations, and this migration, we can add everything else we need. So I think we need to have a string for the first name and a string for the last name. We should have an email address. And I wanna make sure that that is unique. Finally, Let's do one more and maybe we'll have this for a text area and that will be for a description if we want to include that. But I'm not going to require it, so I'm going to allow null for that. All right, that looks good to me. So PHP Artisan, let's migrate the database and take a look at what we have now. So if I reload, now we have the migrations table that were installed. That's only for Laravel, you don't need to worry about that. And now we have our context table that has first name, last name, email address, and a description. That does allow null. Good. So now I want to set up some seed items. So let's create this for contacts.php. And I will simply return an array. And for each one, we need to have the first name. And I'll do John, last name. We'll do this first one together, and then I'll fast forward for the other two. His email address will be john at example.com. And his description will be my best friend. All right, that looks good. So I will duplicate this a couple times and add in some other data. And here we go. So now we have one for John, Jane, and myself. So now I want to add that to the table. So in Artisan, I can do PHP Artisan DB seed. And that will go ahead and populate that table now with three seed items, as you can see right here. Good. So next, I need to create our controller. So let's do that once again in Artisan. Artisan does a lot of stuff for us. So we're gonna create a controller. And the name of the controller should be a controller for our contacts. So I will call it contacts controller. All right, let's close out our config section, close out the database, get rid of these two, and now we can go into our contacts controller and get started. So as I noted in the previous lessons when we got into the idea of REST, one nice thing is that Laravel will automatically create these methods for us, these RESTful actions. So I can say for index, that is for displaying the list, all of the items within the resource. So I will return contact all. However, before I can interact with this, I need to make sure that I set up a model for our contacts. So we'll call it contact.php, class contact extends eloquent. And now Laravel will automatically create the connection. And now what I wanna do this time is just breeze through this. So let's switch to no distraction mode and knock some of these out. So for create, that should be the one that's responsible for displaying the form. Let's leave that blank for now. Store will be responsible for creating a new contact. So we will say contact create. And the first name, we need to make sure that we grab the input. So I will say input Jason. And the first name will be input first name. We'll also do the last name, the email address, and the description. So let's update that accordingly. Email address, and finally, the description. Okay, that should be good for now. We'll go back and tweak these if we need to. Next, to show one, I'm going to return contact find by ID. Next, to edit one, we'll come back to that. To update one, that means we're going to give it new data and it needs to update an existing row. So we'll say contact equals contact find by ID. I also need the input and now we'll update it. First name equals input first name. 
Once again, we're going to duplicate this a few times for the last name, the description, and the email address. Now that we've made those updates, we're going to save it using Laravel's save method, and that should be fine. And for destroy, why don't we just return contact, find by ID, delete. All right, so we have the basic platform in place. We could do more, we could do some validation, but we wanna be really quick with this. So that looks good for the Laravel end. The next thing I wanna do is set up the routes. So all we have right now is this base route that Laravel provides, but I also wanna set up my resource. So the resource is for contacts, and the controller that will handle that is the contacts controller. And now Laravel will set up all of those bindings. Next, rather than loading this hello view, why don't we call it home? And I will go into the views folder and we're gonna rename this accordingly. Next, let's add just a little bit of boilerplate code. We could also use a layout file for this in Laravel, but I don't know if that's necessary. I'm going to bring in jQuery underscore and backbone only for this demo. In a real world application, I would use something like jam. And I'll try to go over how to use jam if we have enough time. So now I wanna bring in my main file. So let's bring in js slash main.js and go into the public directory. We'll create a new folder for js and within it, let's add main.js. Now within here, we just need to do a little bit of setup. So we wanna do window.app and we will set up our models. You should be very familiar with this by now. Collections, views, and the router. I also want to set up just a very basic pub sub model application wide. So we will call it vent and I'll say window.vent equals underscore dot extend a simple object with backbone.events. And what you'll find is this will be really useful, for example, in our router. When we need to make an announcement, we can attach it to this vent object. Next, what we've been doing up until this point is we've just been hard coding everything into this one file. But what you quickly find is that very quickly becomes unbearable. You end up having all of these views and models and collections, and it's very difficult to traverse. So there's lots of ways to go about this. You can use a tool like require.js so that you can dynamically load all of these modules. And that way, each file is responsible for one thing, one module. So each file would be for a view. You'd have another file for another view. You'd have another file for a model. In this case though, we will try to do a middle point. Rather than every single view, collection, and model within its own file, why don't we take a first step by just creating files for models, our views, our collections, and the router. This isn't ideal, but it's a good first step to cleaning up your code. Now we simply need to reference them. Back within home.blade, we will duplicate this a handful of times. And the next one we're going to bring in will be our models, then our collections, then our views, and one more for the router. And with that, I think our basic system is in place. So in the next lesson, we're gonna start working on our backbone.